Today, I'm going to talk to you about emptied out the negative. Experts estimate that they might think between 60,000 to 80,000 thoughts a day. That's in the average between 2,200 to 3,300 thoughts per hour. I wonder how many of those thoughts are negative or positive. If most of those thoughts are negative, we are limiting our mind to positive thoughts. If you allow worry in, doubt, unforgiveness, fear, then it's no space for peace, for joy, confidence. You have a limited amount of room. I'm going to tell you, maybe it's going to be a funny story for you, but it's real. Uh, between Pastor John and me. One day, when I was dating him, I went to his house and I went to the refrigerator to get a bottle of water. When I opened the refrigerator, I see this container of water level joy. It caught my attention a little bit, but not as much as until I went to the restaurant. So I'm going to the restaurant and I see another container Label, I hate you, you make me sick. Then he invited me to go upstairs to watch a documentary. When I'm going upstairs, I hear heavy metal music. And I was like, heavy metal? Since when he is listening to this type of music? So he opened the door of one of the rooms and I see another container that said heavy metal. And that moment, I have to ask him, what is going on? What are you doing? And he said, no, I want to do this experiment. I want you to watch this documentary with me. I have been reading this book. The documentary was about this Japanese scientist that after studying for many years through the high speed of photography of water crystal, revealed that thought and vibration affect the molecular structure of water. I sound like a scientist, right? When word of love, gratitude were spoken near the water, the water crystal formed beautiful geometric shapes. But when evil words were spoken to a sample of water, the crystal is smashed and turned into destructive shape. The experiments show that words are important. Our body is almost 70% of water depending on so many factors like weight, like your health, like sex, it depends. This can have a strong impact on human awareness. So words we think, words we speak, words that we hear can have an impression on our mind or our body. Ephesians 4, 27 says, don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to manipulate you. Don't believe in the light of the enemy. Every time he tries to remind you about your past, just remind him about his future. He's already defeated. God wants to give us beautiful ashes. As many of you know, I'm a teacher and teaching this year uh, first grade. So when my students come to me saying, Miss Boma, so and so told me that I'm ugly. Or Miss Boma, uh, he's telling me that I am fat. I always ask them the same question. Is that true? And guess what? The answer is almost the same one over and over. No. So if that is not true, ignore that. I do this over and over and over, day after day after day, until their mind is renewed. And they start doing that by themselves. So if they can do it, we can do it as well. God has created us with a purpose. Don't limit your space. You have the power to control what is in your mind. We all have negative emotion. We are human, but you have to make a choice. Don't let the enemy poison your mind. Every time you have a negative thought, just remember what the Word of God says. One of my favorite scriptures when I am dealing with negative thoughts is 
2 Corinthians 10, 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take, say it with me, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I know that some times are easier than others, but those times you have to be strong and think about what the Word of God said about you. You have to be stronger than your mind. You have the power to control those thoughts. David said in Psalms 103, God fill my life with good things so I can stay young and strong. Be careful with what you are listening. Be careful with what you are hearing. If you feel depressed, don't listen to country music. You're gonna end worse. Try to listen music that encourages you. Worship music. The same thing, just be careful with what you are listening or maybe with what you are watching on TV. Every morning that you wake up, just do the declarations. I am blessed, prosperous, redeemed, created. Do your devotional. Meditate on what the Word of God said about you. He's our Father. I know that sounds easy, but as the Bible says, life and death are in the power of your tongue. Matthew 1, 70 talks about how we can pour new wine into all white skin. If we do, the skin will burst and the wine will be ruined. So release your worries. Make a room for the love of God to fill up your mind. Being bitter, angry, resentful will shorten your life. God wants to give you the best because He's your Father and He already forgives you. He's a God that will do anything for you. I'm going to tell you one of my experience. Well, maybe no one, maybe two experiences. Uh, when I came here to the United States, as you know, I'm from Venezuela. I have a U.S. bank account. But in that moment, when the government took over, that bank account was closed. That means that I end without anything. The only thing that I have was a little bit of cash that I had with me. It was so hard. I had so many people that told me, you better go back to your country. You're gonna be there better than here. You don't have money. What are you gonna do? I called the airline three times and I made my luggage several times as well because I was like, I am done, but God. After 22 years, and I'm still in this country. So I hope if my friend and one of those friends are seeing, and I'm still here, praise God. The other thing that I want to share with you was about my first marriage. My first husband, he was very abusive. And one of the form of abusing he was using was verbal. I remember when we were divorcing that I was moving back over here to Houston. He said, you never ever gonna get married. You are so ugly. You're gonna be alone for the rest of your life. Few years later, I met Pastor John. It's not because he's here tonight, but he's the best thing that ever happened to me. He loved me so much and cared so much about me that I'm so thankful that God gave me a second chance. If you are here for the first time and you haven't accepted Christ as your Savior, tonight is the night. God is the only one who can fight that battle in your mind. Accept Him. God already died for your sins. Toward the end of Jesus' life, He had been betrayed by His disciple, mocked by the soldiers, and falsely accused. Now, he was hanging on the cross, wearing a crown of thorns, about to breathe his last breath. He did something significant. He said, Father, before I go, I need to take care of one last thing. Forgive them. Forgive them. God already forgives. Why do we need to live in condemnation if God already forgives us? Empty your container. Make a space for positive thought. Don't give more space to the enemy. Fill your container with hope, joy, forgiveness, 
love, accept his grace, and stop living in condemnation. If someone brings up the negative of your past, it's not from God. He already forgives you. As Pastor Joel says, the problem is not with you. The problem is what you are thinking. All through the day, dwell on God's word. Say what he says about you. So this week, I would like for you to do few things. First, evaluate your container. What are you thinking? Is that true? Is that is not true? Delete it. Number two, start filling your container each day with the word of God, of what God says about you. But last but not least, put guard over your ears. Don't let the negative thought take over your mind.